it's always the extra 10% that will really take your animations up a notch. And I want to share with you five techniques that will help you do just that. One of my absolutely favorite techniques to use in After Effects is something called a match cut. I've used it in this animation right here, so you can get a feel for how you might want to utilize it in After Effects. I'm going to show you exactly how to do them. So in After Effects, I've got this animation here, which is all match cuts. And you can see the cube goes to a circle, the circle goes to two circles, and the two circles go to a pill. And to set this up, it's actually really simple. So what we need to achieve this is two shapes or two objects uh, kind of between the scenes following the same movement pattern. So this could be a positional move or like I've done here, a scale as well. So digging into it a bit further, you can see that I have a null controller here, which kind of runs the show for a lot of my shapes. Now, let me just condense these down here. Now, we're going to start with the square. So I'm going to bring up my keyframes on this cube and you can see the Y position just comes up. I'm just going to take off this echo, which I'm going to come to a little later. Um, and you can see this cube comes up. There's a slight bit of overshoot and it comes down and then we cut to this circle. Now you can see both my cube and my circle here are parented to the same null controller. And all this null controller is doing is scaling up and rotating. Now, because my easing here is the peak is when the cut happens, it kind of hides that transition because it happens so fast. So I've got a really extreme S curve here with a lot of easing going on. And all I'm doing is simply cutting my layers because they're both following the same motion. It feels quite natural on the eyes. It doesn't seem out of place. And that's all that the majority of this animation is. It's same with the circles to the pill here later on. Uh, what we have is these two circles again, uh, parented to a null. And all this null is doing is rotating round. My circles, on the other hand, again, I'll get rid of this, this effect here. My circles, on the other hand, are simply uh, positioning in towards the center while this circle null, while this null is rotating, these, these are positioning into the center. And then at the highest of the extremes, we cut to this pill looking thing. And without the echo, it's really just a circle that I've modified the shape path of. And you can see here the size and roundness. Um, I've just modified that so it, it comes from more looking like two circles rather than just the pill shape. And then that just sets its own easing and it's just rotating round with the null. And again, this is parented and it's all happening on the height of the ease. Next on my list is just adding that extra flair with layer styles or noise or something like that. And it's actually very simple to do. Now there is a ton of tutorials on this, but I just wanna show you the difference in what layer styles might do. So here's an example of no noise, no inner shadows or anything like that. Simply just the animation you just saw, but without any extra flair on it without any layer styles or anything like that and you can tell it looks okay it looks quite nice but it doesn't really have much to it like it's quite an old flat design style which i would say isn't really popular at the minute it used to be very popular when i was starting to do motion graphics that's kind of gone out of the way and now we have this this noisier posterized time style coming in and that's all i've done here now very simple to set up. All we need to do is on our layer styles, I've just got some inner shadows, uh, some inner glows and a gradient overlay. And that's simply all it is. And then on the top, I have a noise layer, which is just simply a noise that's not colorized. And then if you want to, you can take it a step further and posterize time on that to really add something else to it. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the echo effect, which I briefly mentioned earlier with the smears and you can call them smears and usually it's during fast paced motion and it just creates a nice little effect and secondary animation. All you need to do is I'm going to apply it to my cube here. I'm going to add an echo effect and I'm just going to bring this above my choker here because the choker will kind of help us a little later down the line. Now you can see here because I've got my layer styles, it looks all a bit a bit funky. So what I'm going to do is just increase the number of echoes. So we actually get a bit more going on. And I want to reduce this time because that distance for me is, is too large. So I'm going to bring this down to maybe 0 0.01. And then because we've got this layer style, it's creating a bit of confusion on the shape. So I need to set this to minimum and that will hide it. And we now get this smear looking thing. And this choker, all it's doing is taking all these shapes 
and kind of blending them into one. So that's where the choke is quite useful. Um, it blends them into one and creates the smear effect that you see all through this animation. Next on my list is a really big animation principle that really you should be aware of. And if you're not, it's a very simple thing to do. And it really adds a lot to your animations. And we're going to talk about overshoot and anticipation. Now, I'd highly recommend you research these in further depth, but just to give you an idea of what it might be, um, I will show you my After Effects here. And basically, I've got a little bit on this. I've not gone too wild with it, but you'll mainly see it a lot in uh, cartoon animation and character animation. And depending on the style, um, it's just a nice thing to have. Now, I have not gone too wild on this one, but you can see um, with this circle layer here, what happens is I actually scale down first before scaling up and having the cut. And you could say it's the press of a button or something like that. But in actual fact, it's just a bit of anticipation. And all we're doing is an anticipating that there's going to be a big move. So you could do this by perhaps scaling down a little bit like I've done here. Or if we open up a new comp, you know, we could have a square that kind of anticipates its rotation. So if I just have this from zero and I'll go forward a few frames and then rotate this slightly that way, and then we'll just go forward 20 frames and then have maybe 180 degrees rotation. Now, if I just ease these and I'm just going to bring this down so we get some more easing on it, make it really fast, it really anticipates this move and then has a slow ease out. You kind of get a little bit. Now, it's not what I was hoping for. I'd probably bring this down a bit more and, and go a bit wild on it. And then we could even take this a step further by maybe having a two frame hold on that. And then sort of reducing that ease a little bit. So you kind of get that swing back and then it swings forward. Now, this is obviously just a really quick example. Um, I would probably smooth this out and take it a little slower. But it gives you an idea of what anticipation might be. Now, to take this a step further, we can add overshoot to the end here. So I'm just going to go a couple frames before the end. I'm going to copy that keyframe and paste that in. And all I'm going to do is drag that up so it slightly overshoots past the value we're wanting. And that's why it's called an overshoot. Simply going past and it just adds a little bit of extra bounce to it. Now, we could obviously slow that down a lot more. It's quite quick. And you just get a little bit more. It just adds something to your animation. Now, you can see it here in my animation with the pill that I've done, where it simply over rotates a little bit and then nicely eases back. And you can take this to any extreme you want. There's plenty of great tutorials on this should you want to look at it in further depth. Now, finally, on my list is a technique I absolutely love. And it's more of an effect than a technique, but it's a wave warp. And it's exactly what's happening to create this liquid in the pill. And there's plenty of great uses for it that can really kind of add something to your animation without actually needing to do much. So this is a really, really simple setup. You can see I've got my pill container here and all it is is making these, uh, these two kind of liquid animations is simply two rectangle layers. And these just have a wave warp effect applied. Now, of course, I need to turn this rotation off so you can kind of see what's happening. So all that these do is animate across the screen using a position, and that's it. Now, what the wave warp does is essentially apply a sine wave through an object. Now, you can obviously change this type and kind of have a have an experiment with what kind of wave type you want to go through these. I often just use a sine wave. I think it works great for a lot of stuff in 2D and 3D. Um, and then all I've done is animated that slightly and then added on a turbulent displace. Now, just to see what the wave warp does, if I just solo one of these, just to give you an idea of what it does, we get this wave running through that kind of animates on its own. Now, to create the kind of liquid effect that I've got around with the swirling container, I've added an extra turbulent displace for some extra animation onto that, create some really wavy kind of liquid, and then I've added the second layer which is moving in the opposite direction and on a slightly different uh, wave warp and that means we can kind of get that back in and that cool kind of liquid wave effect and when we remap that into the pill we get the lovely liquid kind of pill effect 
Now finally, as you'll have seen in this project, I use quite a few nulls throughout my workflow. And if you want to learn more about this, you can watch this video here. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.